Hello and welcome to another video of Microsoft Fabric. In today's video, I will showcase you how can you bring in data from Azure SQL to warehouse using data pipeline. Some of you were facing the issue and you have asked that on YouTube. So I'm going to do that flow Azure SQL to warehouse via data pipeline. So let's start our journey. Let's start our journey from the Microsoft Fabric. So we'll jump out of the Microsoft Fabric and I have already opened my Workspace 01 Fabric. So my workspaces are there and in 01 Fabric. Now to do this one, I'm going to use a um, warehouse which is already created and we are going to land our table into the warehouse 2. I have created warehouse 2 using new show all and warehouse. Let me show you the steps. I'm not going to create, but let me show you where it is. So from here, I've created a new warehouse. Now in this warehouse, I would like to get the data using data pipeline. So let me start creating a pipeline. So from the same new option, let me bring back again. So I'm going to create a data pipeline and I will create this data pipeline in my 01 fabric workspace. In my 01 fabric workspace, I will go to new and to data pipeline. So in the new show all. We'll follow the same step. Now this time we will say data pipeline. So I'll click on data pipeline and I'll give it a name as ASQL Azure SQL to WH warehouse 2. Let's say WH2 create. So from Azure SQL, I would like to go to warehouse 2 and I have Azure SQL set up on with my one of my ID and there I have set up it with the uh, login credentials so I can use a username and password to get my data from there. I already have my sales customer item dimension table there under the demo database and I'll try to retrieve data from there. I have created a data pipeline. Now I will add a copy step in that. And in this copy step, the first step is to choose a data source. And this is here. I will choose a data source. I'll scroll down and I'll show, show choose Azure SQL database and I'll click on the next and I need to choose a connection. I already selected this connection couple of time, but you can enter your URL and click it on this. And once it is there, you can actually edit the details or I'll show you how to create a new connection. Let me show showcase you the creating connection or you have already seen now, how can I use the existing one? But if you don't have, so what you have to do is first thing you have to do is give is the URL. So I'm going to give URL into the server. Then the database is demo. Then connection, I can rename this connection as the uh, demo ASQL. Demo ASQL and then basic authentication. Then I need to give username and I give, give you the password. Once I'm done, I'll say next. Once I press the next, I I'll, it will ask me to save. I say, don't save. So existing table, I'm going to bring in, uh, it is, it, I can bring in a couple of tables from here. So let me do that. Okay. So I say next, then where I want to copy it, I want to copy it into the data warehouse. So I click on data warehouse in the middle, you can see this option. Then I say next. And in this one, I need to choose a warehouse. So I'm going to choose warehouse two. Then I need to press next. It is asking loads to existing table or load to new table. I'm going to say load to new table. It's going to show me the column mapping. And in the mapping, you can validate the data type. If there is a now warehouse do support space, but in case you want to remove some of the space, you can do it. And I'll call it a S Q L as your SQL item ASQL so that we can differentiate. And here uh, I'll say to new table. Table also, I'm going to give a new name, which is ASQL. 
as sales as SQL so that we can differentiate. We have bring it from Azure SQL. Okay. So now I have done both the tables. In one go, I'm trying two tables. Okay. So item sales. Now no nothing is needed to be changed here. So I'll go and next is enable staging. Now we need to have a staging while we are bringing in data, but uh, Fabric is taking care of that staging. So Microsoft Fabric is taking care. We don't have to worry about it. Start transfer immediately. I'll say no. I'll say oh, uncheck that and I'll say OK because I want to see how my pipeline has actually built. So it has created a copy for each has been used here. And let's see. This is the setting, the pipeline and the activities for each activity. The copy activity has been created. And uh, so there are multiple copies which we have created and I clicked on the copy activity so it will show me source it will show me destination and uh, mapping so we are multiple so that's why it is there so now we have a pipeline where we are copying the multiple tables so that's what we have done till now I have shown you many times how to do single table this is a pipeline which has been created for multiple tables so what steps we do we uh, we actually uh, first save this then we will once it is saved we will validate it second step validate so saved validated and third step is to run so i'm going to run it and i already tested this flow for single table and it ran successfully it, it is loaded the table so it's not that i am showing it for two tables I'm going to run for two tables no i have already tested it for one single table and it worked that time for a single table so it's showing me the option here to run this array and I'll say OK. And it started showing the pop ups on the top that it is running. And we do expect it will start automatically shifting here. Uh, this uh, details will be shown here in the output. It should automatically shift that. As you can see here, it is in the notification area. I can click here and I can see the running and you can see this uh, process which is running and right now it's running already running for 19 seconds so let's wait for this process to complete so as you can see the pipeline has completed successfully it has loaded both the tables and both the copies are successful uh, within a minute both the things have happened and you can see the notification area also showing all our steps Okay, so let me do one thing. Let me cross this out and let's go to our warehouse and check warehouse uh, two we have used and let's go there and check it out. So we'll go to zero one fabric workspace. These days we are getting these icons here itself, uh, the recent icons and I'll click on that recent icon. I go to my workspace and from that workspace, I go to my warehouse. And let me click on warehouse two. And warehouse 2 is directly going to open the SQL endpoint because warehouse is always SQL. There is nothing like lake where we have a lake view and then we have a SQL endpoint view and then we have a data set. Now here we only have the SQL endpoint because which is read and write SQL endpoint and data set. So now I am clicking on item table which is already loaded here and I'm seeing the data for the item table. You can see I'm able to see a preview here and similarly I'm going to click on the sales table here sales a sql uh, which is azure sql that's what the name we have given and we are able to see the data from here now let's quickly run a query on this and see uh, have we got the data correctly so uh, let me run a count star first of all let me cut this out so i know how many rows i have i usually have 30000 rows in my data test data have 30000 rows let's see how many rows have come so all the 30,000 rows have come. Now let's quickly write down a query. Um, so we let's uh, use the top 100 rows, select it and check it out. This is working one group by query as usual, but that is what we do. So we say item ID. And we'll say this time I'll do a little bit different. I'll say sum of price star quantity
and we'll call it gross and group by I will by mistake press the alt enter instead of enter so group by item id so let's run this so we we got the results now what i'm going to do is instead of creating a query using item a sql and sales a sql uh, i'm going to just join them in the model i'm going to run them in power bi so now let's bring see where our tables are hopefully there is no relationship detected automatically okay both of them are nearby so i'm going to drag item from sales a sql to item a sql many to one single directional join and i can say re assume referential integrity because i have data which doesn't have any item id which is not present in item uh, which is there in sql so sales table does not have any id which is not present in my item table so that has been already been taken care in this model so my model is ready uh, and you can see this model those of you missed out where i've done it see model is below here uh, near to the status bar and this join is already created here and now time has come to go to new report there is a new visual query also which we can try out but i'm going to go to new report i'm a power bi guy to prefer that to test the things on power bi so and that is basically also end user friendly some of pe people might not be comfortable with the, the um, uh, sql so for them it is just a ui tool you drag and drop now we have to create separate separate data set in such scenarios because right now you can you will see too many things around here and the reason for having too many things around here is because we are testing these uh, set of tables again and again from different sources so we have bring in data from azure sql using data type pipeline multiple tables at a time all of them we have bought in here and we are able to get the data in warehouse and able to analyze that in power bi so azure sql flow please follow these step and i'm also hopeful that you will be able to do that so why don't you go ahead and try out this flow and do let me know what else you want me to cover in this particular series. Thanks for watching this video. Thank you.